right, come on in to Minnie. Welcome to our presentation from Wyden and Minnie, a case study on customer engagement and brand curation. Now, what's in the story? Well, I'm with a company many of you have likely never heard of before, except for maybe the session just before this with Al and Nina, which was awesome. Great uh, session to tie into this one today. But you've likely heard of many of the customers that we work with. So that's why we like to tell stories, real customer stories we can all relate to. My favorite customer stories are those where we can feel that connection, uh, have that emotional connection, where we can share a bond and learn from each other. Now, I've done that with many because they create that with their customers. And you'll see that with Rebecca. So today, we're going to share some stories about how Mini is creating stronger connections with its customers. And our hope is that you can find some inspiration to do more of that with your own customers. Now, I'm Jake Athey, an aspiring storyteller and marketing technology enthusiast with Widen. And I'm joined by Rebecca from Mini of Madison, our very special guest and co-presenter. Now, Rebecca runs the events, sponsorships, social media and promotions for Zimbrick Mini of Madison. Now I've had this fascination with Mini for over 10 years, probably since I first saw the Italian job with Mark Wahlberg uh, <laughs> when I was still in college. Many of you may have seen that movie or perhaps the first movie in 1969 with Michael Caine. Well, watching this movie and the minis on the run just brings that thrilling feeling of being in full control over your situation, any situation. So today, we want to give you five things so that you can feel in more control over your situation with marketing. Now, we're going to talk about brand and how you can build yours to be one where your customers want to feel that emotional connection with your brand. And then we're going to talk about experiences and the new era of marketing and how to bridge the online and offline experience gap. We're going to talk about content curation, which is a fascinating subject where you can produce more content on your own and in tandem with your customers to strengthen your content marketing effort and your brand story. And then we're going to talk about how to foster an online and offline community around your brand. And then last, we're going to talk about how you can build a contagious culture so that all of your friends and fans, employees and customers feel part of something great and they want to share it. So through all five things, Rebecca and I are going to share some stories from Mini and what they're doing to create enjoyable brand experiences for its customers. How they're fostering community, curating content and building a culture of passionate motorists. So let's talk about brand. We work with hundreds of brands at Widen, from large to small, many here in the Madison area, such as Pacific Cycle, Trek, Cuna Mutual Group, Sub-Zero and Wolf, St. Mary's, and Pizza Pit. Now, with that, we talk with many great brand leaders. Now, Nina and I attended this event this last fall in Philly in October, and it was a meeting of creative minds. And we heard a gentleman by the name of Andy Epstein of the Boss Group, a true change leader, talk about social media. And he says this, we can do social well because we're close to the culture and the voice of the brand because we live it every day. So if you only take one thing from our time today, feel good about the work that you're doing to build your brand because you know it best, own it. Now, Al, who spoke in the last session, recently put together this great customer video uh, following their tour out on the East Coast and it included a number of customer stories. Among that is this great quote. Now, a brand is not a product or a promise or a feeling. It's the sum of all the experiences you have with a company. Now, that quote really sums it up. Brand is everything, as, as Nina will often say, and we believe at Widen as we work with many of our customers. Now, we have entered the experience era of marketing. Now, what is that? Well, in fact, we heard Robert Rose, just a few weeks ago, of the Content Marketing Institute, talking at the BMA Milwaukee Chapter Luncheon about this new experience era. Now he says, the experience era of marketing is characterized by marketing's charter and ability to create content-driven experiences that make customers feel immersed in the value of our brands. 
Now, you can read all about that in his new book, but that feeling of being immersed in the value of the brand is one that many of us can relate to, and you're definitely going to see that with many. So what do you think about when you think of brand? Do you think experience? Well, how about Harley-Davidson? That feeling of riding a hog, getting a logo of Harley-Davidson tattooed on your arm. Now that's hardcore brand immersion right there. How about arts and crafts, gardening, doing many of the things we just can't wait to do this spring and summer, using quality products from Fiskars, of course. Or getting the bike out and going for a ride. That's a brand experience every time you get on that trek. Going out to Madison Mallard's baseball game, eating peanuts and Cracker Jacks, yelling wiener wherever the foul ball goes into the stands. <laughs> How about take your brat to work day? Good music, great brats, a true Madison experience. And now Minnie, my favorite widened customer. Why? Well, not only do I know a great Minnie rock star in Rebecca, but because they taught us something. We learned how to new, use some new tools and processes to better connect marketing content to create a more lively and enjoyable brand experience. And we'll show you how in just a minute. So at Widen, we power the content that builds brands. And that's enough about who we are. But why is brand important? Well, this may come as a reminder to many of you, but you know why uh, we do the things we do. We share experiences. Now, a brand, again, is a culmination of every interaction people have with your product or service. Who you are, what you stand for, and what you represent in the marketplace. What promise you deliver. Now, the content that you create and deliver about your brand impacts people's perception. Your content needs to be meaningful in order to resonate with your audience. Now, if you don't have goals for the way you're creating content and it's not curated in a way that's meaningful, the brand just won't feel authentic or as believable. So to build brands, we must create and curate content. Now, if you've been in marketing for some time, you know the value of creating content that is helpful, useful, educational, inspiring, and entertaining. <clears throat> now, to connect with uh, the value that you bring to your customers. Now, many of us only have so much bandwidth to do this on our own, so that's why content curation introduces a whole other element to our brand. So what's the difference? Well, content creation is something that you can call your own. It's yours. You made it. It represents your capabilities, your experience, and your expertise. It also showcases your tone, your voice, and your personality. And it shows that what you offer in value is unique to your audience. Now, curation is about collecting something that belongs to someone else. It's sharing other people's content, and that's inherently social. <clears throat> Engagement with your brand may be lower because people can be engaged with that content elsewhere, too. So that's a risk. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, content creation and curation help to build trust. And we've learned from many and Beam Interactive, their digital agency in Boston, that the most powerful approach for your brand is a hybrid strategy of content curation and creation. And Beam believes Brands should be frictionless, fantastic, and effective. And we just love what they stand for because it makes the lessons learned from many so much more meaningful. So Beam works with many to strategize new and creative ways to use user-generated content in all of their marketing and customer experiences. Now, it's really a great case story of a great brand in many doing a lot with very little, and it's something we can all relate to. <clears throat> They curate some really high quality user generated content, which just shows that passion and the connection that its customers have with the Mini brand. Many of you may not know, but Mini is a big brand, but a small company. They only actually produce 6,000 cars in the United States a year and only have 55 employees at their corporate headquarters. So that's something many of us can likely relate to. And as you may know, Mini puts together some really fantastic advertising. They have some really fun, edgy national campaigns and content that just fuels the passion for the brand, such as this one. And they just really want you to know that their new mini countryman model can really haul. But the mini brand is 
more than marketing. It's a brand about a lifestyle. It's more than a car, it's an icon, as Rebecca will say. So to show that lifestyle, they have all of this great imagery and videos and content that they share and they curate from their customers traveling, racing, exploring, and living that mini brand every day. So I've met Rebecca a couple times and I can definitely see how many people live that brand. In fact, we just learned from, from Jane is going to be a new mini owner someday. So rock on. Uh, I'm not a mini owner, I'm a Chevy guy, but Re Rebecca gets everybody excited about that. He's not a mini owner yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to it. So, Mini uh, uses user generated content to better engage with all of its customers across social media and really uh, enliven that brand experience. Now, they repurpose all of their great user generated content. Uh, in other mini campaigns and brand domains, uh, using photo and video contests as Mini USA's hub to capture and curate all of this great content throughout social media. So meet Matt. Matt Gelano is the senior multimedia producer at Beam Interactive, and he says that user-generated content is the present for us and the future for others. User-generated content is especially liked by consumers because people are savvy of marketing and it's a breath of fresh air. So with that, Mini's content curation strategy makes the brand more authentic, transparent, and engaging. So how do they do it? We'll show you. In our first example, a monthly photo contest, we take you through their process of curating high-quality, user-generated content with social media. Now, Mini USA conducts a photo challenge every month, and you can see this on the community section of miniusa.com. And with that, they're able to curate and collect these great pieces of imagery and videos from all over the web. And here's a look at the photo challenge page on miniusa.com from October. This page showcases the theme for the month, some tips and tricks, and some rights and consent verbiage. Now, photos can be submitted via, via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter using hashtags tied to that campaign theme. And the curation process is automated with the help of ifthisthenthat.com a free and simple cloud connector site that you can use, and Dropbox as a means to collect all of this great content. Now when IFTTT finds a post with that campaign hashtag, it'll automatically put that image or video file in this Dropbox folder where it can be used across other social media and their creative campaigns. Now many also collects photos and videos via their website as well, and due to the ease by which customers can submit their content, they're seeing some new pieces of user-generated content on a daily basis. They're really collecting some high-quality uh, imagery and videos as a result of this effort. They're seeing that even pro or semi-pro photographers are willing to share their imagery to be featured on the website or social media of this very well-known brand. Now from the point of entry to the voting phase, uh, Beam and many are sharing some of their favorite examples on the community contest page. They pick nine and then let the users decide who the fan favorite will be each month. So sharing some of this best content just encourages more sharing of better quality content. Now customer voting just wrapped up for their most recent contest with the hashtag many couples campaign going on in February. Rebecca, did you submit a photo for that? I did. My boyfriend and I met at Mini University. So we both have minis and I definitely submitted a picture, but we didn't make it. We didn't win. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Great testament to live in the brand. And if you want to participate, if you're a mini owner, the, the contest went on this month is hashtag spring clean mini, and you can see it now on miniusa.com. But how to do it? This is an automation blueprint you can follow, and uh, I'm happy to share more details with you. But the big thing to know is that you need to hold contests and events that allow you to rally your audience and use hashtags. Uh, it's really important to use and promote your hashtag across all of your online and offline customer touch points. Use some free and simple cloud tools like IFTTT and Dropbox so that you can quickly repurpose your content across your paid, owned, and uh, earned content channels. Sharing this great customer-driven content is a great way to increase engagement with your customers and this only builds or enhances your customer experiences and it amplifies your brand. So know that we've proven this to be a repeatable process. 
and one that allows you to scale your content marketing and your curation efforts within your organization of any size. Wyden actually does some of this for our events, as Nina now shared earlier, and we also host some monthly photo contests just to increase product utilization as a way to incent people to try new things. Here are a few more examples. Uh, Schwinn Bikes, uh, Pacific Cycle, did this as well for their hashtag uh, Schwinn Local contest, and they repurposed a bunch of great content, or curated and repurposed a bunch of great content across its social networks. Here's an example showing that Rebecca shares her photo uh, in front of this mural on her Schwinn bike, uh, shared it on Instagram, and then it ends up on their Pinterest, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Pinterest. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts. And the top three fan photos were then featured as the, the favorites, which only encourages more sharing of better quality content. Now, Schwinn was able to see uh, increased social engagement and following on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. And they collected a ton of great content that they can now include across other creative projects and marketing channels. You can find some other creative ways to use user-generated content as well. Uh, some creative ways that will bridge that online and offline experience. So here's a pair, pair of great examples from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism and TravelWisconsin.com. Their Fall Color Report is one of their most visited applications on the site each year. And what that is, it's an interactive map that allows people to go to TravelWisconsin.com and find the places around the state with the best fall colors. Uh, at each specific time of the fall. And they have a lot of great user-generated content photos submitted through this site that they can take and use in other Travel Wisconsin collateral. They also have a snow conditions report that will show all of the great snowmobile trails, hiking, cross-country skiing, and then all the slopes around the state, and the conditions all complemented with some great imagery to show the customer's experience. Now back to many. Uh, here's our second example of how they're bridging the online and offline experience gap. Now, Mini has begun experimenting with Tumblr in the last year to really unite this incredibly loyal fan following that they have. And they did that with the Mini Takes the States event going from San Francisco to Boston this last summer. 300 people made, made, the, made the trip with, with, the mini, with their Minis. Uh, Here's an example showing Blue Ivy sharing her photo on Instagram, which then ends up on their Tumblr microsite where they can relive the moment, share it with all of their friends and family, and really show their love for the mini brand in this live experience within a digital channel. And then our next example is a video contest, and this is a really cool before and after story uh, showing submissions in their final productions. So many held a contest called the Final Test Test Drive in advance of releasing their new hardtop model early last year. So contestants were encouraged to dream up uh, some really incredible commercial ideas or for test drives and then share those with Mini. They could share via MiniUSA.com or via Instagram, YouTube, or Vimeo. All the approved submissions were then featured on the MiniUSA.com community page. And they were able to collect hundreds of submissions via many uh, uh, USA.com, some more clever and creative than others. But their top 10 commercials were featured on the final test, test drive page after it ended, and all went on to become production quality TV commercials with their agency. And all became part of the anthem. Here it is. Before we launched the new Mini, we put it through a final test. We handed the keys over to 10 of our owners and let them test anything they wanted. We think it's fair to say they approved. engagement now features many owners and their ideas on TV commercials and a YouTube video with over 4 million views in six months. So that was free content and ideas and inspiration for the, the campaigns that followed. 
the top line revenue at many shows that user generated content and this in, in, incredibly loyal fan following that they have is, is really working for them. And we'll learn more about that with many. But how have things changed for, for Beam and Mini? Well, they now have a window into all of the Mini USA assets from product photo shoots to user generated content and a way to quickly repurpose that in all of their marketing campaigns and creative projects. Now, they're able to create an authentic brand experience for the Mini USA audience, an audience that really cares. And again, you're going to see that with, with Rebecca uh, because it's, a, it's really a thrilling feeling that many owners have. And then engagement with a loyal audience through participation in user-driven content experiences is a great, great way to bridge the online and offline experience gap. So how can you come up with some experience-worthy ideas? Well, these are just a few tips to provide a starting point. Identify with the cultural characteristics that make your organization unique. What industry trends can you make the most of? Uh, what, what goes on in pop culture that might tie to your brand? And just a warning to be careful with any of that. But what seasons or days of the week can you really make the most of any opportunities to engage your audiences? And then ultimately, uh, go to your people. Your people are a great source of ideas and, and inspiration and they're subject matter experts and just fun loving people all over your organization that you should, you should bring to, to the forefront. A few more tips for creating meaningful content for your brand. Find out what people want and talk to your customers, partners, employees. And Yes, <laughs> um, but as you can see from like the, the session before and, and, and what Rebecca is able to show, there's a lot of overlap you know, between content marketing and events and really using social media to, to make the most of connecting with your customers. Ultimately, people just want a human connection, it's P to P, uh, person to person, and and through some of these tips, you can apply to to your your business, whether you're B2B or B2C. So, um, use the right resources to create original content, make your content available and shareable, and follow up with your stakeholders. Uh, the content cycle repeats itself as, as we've, we've shared before. What was the content interesting or entertaining? Um, what was the business impact? Does it add value? But now I want to turn it over to Rebecca uh, and share more about what she's doing to create that loyalty here in the Madison area. Now, I've only met Rebecca twice. Uh, I feel like I've known her for years because the passion she has for what she does and represents at Mini is, is quite contagious. And she does a phenomenal job here in Madison of taking the national campaigns from, from Mini and really making the most of it here at a local level. So here's Rebecca. Hello, the clicker. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca Simpson. I'm so proud to say that I work for Mini in Madison. Um, and I've worked with the Mini brand for about five years. Uh, and I'm also so happy to be here with Jake and with Wyden and to be in front of all of you and get to share uh, my ideas and thoughts. I've never done this before, but I've always really wanted to. I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> um, and I just really want to share how my ideas of being social and doing events really ties into you know, technology and social media and marketing. Um, Does it work? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so just a little bit about me and my background. Uh, my experience comes from 17 years. When I wrote that down, I was like, wow, um, being in marketing and advertising. Um, some of the brands I've worked with along the way have been Red Bull, um, some liquor brands, which taught me a ton uh, about promotions and getting your brand out there, like Smirnoff and Guinness, and I worried that that might happen. <laughs> easy, Jake. Um, easy, Jake. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I started working with Mini at a really small ad agency in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, I was lucky enough to have a client that was a dealership going after the Mini brand. So what I got to do, which was so cool, was interview Mini owners and find out why they bought their Mini, what they love about their Mini, um, why Mini. And then, of course, I secret shopped some of the other Mini dealerships, and that was really cool to meet motoring advisors, which are salespeople. We, they're called motoring advisors. <laughs> Because um, we really don't like to be called salespeople because we don't feel like that's what we're doing. Um, we feel like we're advising you. Um, and then I got to drive the car, so I was done. I've been done-zo for a long time. Um, 
So, I mean, I, I just was hooked after that point. And so that really brings us to my current position at Minnie and Madison. Um, as I said, I met my boyfriend at Minnie U. He lived in Wisconsin. Here I am. Um, and when I met my boss here at Minnie and Madison, I interviewed for sales because I've done sales, but we just both agree that Mini is a type of brand that you really want to bring out to the forefront. You want to bring the car out to the people because it's such a unique experience. It's such a quirky car. It's got this iconic race car history. People have a lot of questions about the car, and so we do more than just a website and a social media campaign and sales collateral. We, we bring the car to you so you can meet the Mini. Um, and we really try to create a mini experience that's relevant and, and welcome. So this is a team of people at Mini and Madison, and I really want to showcase that these are our personal minis. We all own minis. Not everyone at Mini owns minis, but um, this is a sales team, and you can't really tell because it's kind of small. We we're all getting ready to go to the St. Patty's Day Parade last year, um, and we were having a blast. But, you know, it's one of those brands that the sales team, we buy the brand. The technicians that work on the cars buy the brand. Our sales managers buy the brand. They don't give us the car. We, we own them. And we do things to them like we add stripes and we change the color of the wheels. We add roof racks. We really personalize it to make it an extension of our personality. And it feels like our little buddy or our partner in crime. I mean, it's really the kind of car that... Um, becomes a part of your life in a major way, even though it's many. Um, so what I do, my, my sole purpose <laughs> at Mini Madison is I'm the event advisor. I totally made that name for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we do things, I'd like to think that we really do things differently um, for a car dealership and even just a mini dealership. There's um, other mini dealerships that do events, but I don't think there's another dealership that has an event advisor and my sole job, my sole purpose is to plan events at the dealership, um, sponsorships outside the dealership, and um, then use all of that to really create an uh, effective, successful social media campaign because it all just ties together really nicely, just as um, Wyden was saying earlier, which is awesome. Um, and this is just a couple things, just examples of our car our cars in the parade, um, some of our team, you know, together out in the public doing stuff, engaging with people, and then, you know, organizing some charity work as well. Um, we worked with the Mallards um, just to raise awareness of their food pantry. We collected food just to see how much food would fit in a mini, and we actually um, needed two minis, <laughs> which was great. Um, but, you know, we really pick these teams and these festivals to sponsor because they mean something to us, um, personally and professionally. I mean, the brand really stands for fun, and it's a uh, lifestyle that people want to be a part of. But, um, you know, we have this marketing budget that's just for events, and we really want that marketing budget to be useful um, in the community. Um, so, we, you know, we work with local fairs like the Willie Street Fair and... Um, local sports teams, which is a huge thing for us. Mad Roland Dolls, which you'll see on um, the roller derby. Here we sponsor them, and that's just been an incredible partnership. Um, and then the Good Community Center, like I said. And, and these, these organizations that we work with really help us just as much as we help them. We cross-promote. We put each other, you know, we definitely tweet and Facebook about each other and tag each other and come up with hashtags and it's very important that when your company is involved in a promotion or an event that you're both equally, you know, kind of cheerleading for each other. And I always try to pay attention to if they are doing that and make sure that our business does that. It's really important. It helps me decide who I'm going to work with the following year. And the next one, this is a little bit about the Mad Roland Dolls. Um, they were, when I... Basically, when I was interviewing for my job at Mini, this was the first team that I said I really want to sponsor because um, it's such a great group of positive, energetic women, and um, they've just become brand ambassadors for us. Um, we, we work together on lots of different things. They come to the dealership and help us. We did a dog in a car wash, so they helped us um, do that. And, you know, and they take pictures the whole time they're there, and so do we, and they, we just share. We share all that information, and... 
Um, it's fun and it's engaging and we're doing it for a good cause. It benefited the Dane County Humane Society and um, it's just I can't talk enough about them. They're just wonderful. Um, and the last thing that, they, that I'll talk about with them is, um, actually it's not the last thing, but um, they did a, a fa fashion show for us. We'd launched our new mini, Cooper, and so it was supposed to be British themed. And um, I discovered that the mini skirt was created by a British fashion designer based on the inspiration of the Mini Cooper. It was her favorite car. So we did a mini skirt tribute fashion show. And you can kind of see one of the girls there. She, it's a Union Jack flag mini skirt, which I found online, which is amazing. <laughs> and we did this really fun video of them driving the cars, getting out of the cars and skating, and it's really fun. So if you get a chance, it's on the main page of our YouTube channel, which is just YouTube slash Minnie Madison. Um, and it's the very first video that's on there, and I really encourage you to watch it because it's just so adorable, and it just really highlights our brand and the energy of the brand, and um, it's just great. Um, but we also do use some national campaigns in our marketing. We have access to uh, national advertising, digital assets for anything we want to do. Radio, out, outdoor, print, email, anything. Um, and you know, and I'll put that on our Facebook page because it's really nice to have your local customer content and stuff we're doing, but it's also really nice to showcase what Mini USA is doing because at the end of the day, we're still a locally owned business. We have our own marketing plan. You know, all the dealerships, we kind of do our own thing. So it's still kind of nice to tie, tie it in and you know, work with national campaigns as well. I mean, why wouldn't we? It's so fun. Um, and then this is a way that I used a national campaign. So this was already created. So I just go into our digital asset folder. And then I can change the copy at the bottom. So I can make it say Mini Madison. I can put a little tagline in there. And this was an ad we put in the program for Mad Roland Dolls. So it was just a way for us to use a corporate ad, but really have that attitude of Mad Roland Dolls and really fit the audience that we're talking to. Um, and of course, it's really fun because it's Think Racy Thoughts, and you know that can go so many different ways. And Mad Roland Dolls, you know, it's just such a fun, sexy sport. It really is. And so this really tied in nicely with that. Um, and then our events. We do, last year I did 61 events off-site, um, sponsoring different festivals, like I said. And we have a 10 by 10 canopy, and we always bring the mini, or two or three, however much room we can, we can get. And um, I did a selfie station last year, because selfies are huge, everyone's doing selfies, and um, we get props and different things from Mini USA, just kind of like packages we'll get in the mail from them throughout the year. It'll be all kinds of different things. But we had British props a lot last year because of the British theme of our launch. And so the big like furry guard hat and driving goggles and the bobby hat. So we brought all that to our events and we let people just put them on and take selfies and we took some pictures too. But um, what I loved was just the, the natural progression of it all. The people would take pictures of themselves and they would post it on their social media and I wouldn't necessarily capture every single photo. I really liked people to have fun and do their own thing and not feel like they're part of our marketing campaign. Yes? A really quick question. Did you set up the camera in a like, position or did people use their own? It was their own. It? Yeah, it was totally just their own. It was really on the outside of our canopy. We had these big British Guard cutouts and then I had these little paddles kind of hanging around, so people would come up to the guards and put, you know, we had a couple of guard hats, and so they'd come up and take their picture with the guard, and I named them names, and it was... Okay, so it was, then they would just use a hashtag, like how would you then acquire that photo? We would ask them to use a hashtag, Minnie Madison, um, in their photos, and not everyone's going to do that, but we just would try to encourage them to do it. Yeah, but great question. Um, and then this is just another example of, you know, when I'm out doing things, I'm trying to take pictures and post, you know, where we're going, what we're doing, who or what's in the car. Um, that was our food drive and, you know, pride parade. And we were a pace car for um, a couple different races in town. That's just the tail end of my boot there. Um, and Iron Man was something else we did last year that was just an example of a big national event that came. You know, we try to do local events mostly, but this was a national event that was a lot of local people. I think it was like 
250,000 people come down there, if not more. Um, and, you know, we, it was great because we were mingling and talking to people for five days, people that were from other cities, people that were from Madison, athletes, um, just anybody and everybody coming out to support Iron Man. And it was really social media gold for us because it's such a wonderful event to be involved with. Um, it's really inspirational to see these athletes, you know, doing this um, great feat. Um, and then we were also the pace car for the bicycling race, which was way cool. Um, and then we had our cars at the finish line, which they moved it during the race, but for four days leading up to the race, our cars were sitting there um, with the Capitol in the background. And I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of people took pictures of that. It was just wonderful um, exposure for us. Um, and this was another really awesome <laughs> thing that happened. <laughs> Um, that's Mr. Lou Ferrigno, the Incredible Hulk. Um, we sponsored the Wizard World Comic Con this year. And um, I've never been to a Comic Con. I wasn't sure what to expect, but we were approached um, by one of the media stations and one of the TV stations here. And I thought, yeah, let's go for it. Let's just do it. It was February. It's a hard time for me to find an event outside to do. So we did it. It was three days, and it was awesome. And um, the crowd is just really quirky and creative, and they're fanatical, and um, it's artistic, and it's really a mini crowd. So it was like perfect, perfect, perfect for mini. The brand is all about being yourself, being funky, doing your thing, whatever it is. And it was just a perfect fit for us. And uh, Mr. Frigno, we had a great conversation, and I got him to sit in the mini, and he fits. <laughs> And uh, many USA loved that because, I mean, how can you, when anyone comes up to us, one of the biggest myths about a mini is, you know, with a tall person or like a, a broad shoulder, oh, I could never fit in a mini. And we're like, well, the Incredible Hulk fits in the mini. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you're going to fit. <laughs> so this has just been wonderful for us. And it's just an example of, you know, getting out there and doing something different. I mean, we're a car, but we're, this car represents so much more than just a way to get around. It's this fun little, like I said earlier, partner. I mean, it really is. Um, I interviewed a lot of Mini owners and asked them how they feel when they're driving their Mini. And it was really fun to hear what they said. Some people said, I feel safe. I feel love. I feel like a rock star. I feel like I just robbed a bank. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's really, it's so much more than just a car. Um, and something else that we started doing this year that I'm really psyched about is we're sponsoring Isthmus Live Sessions. If you haven't heard of it, it's uh, just music that comes into town that's performing at different venues. Isthmus approaches different levels, like some are regional, some are local, some are national, and ask them if they'd like to perform in the Isthmus offices. It's really cool. It's a really exclusive crowd. Um, you get invites, an invite only. And um, they record these musicians, and they only do about three or four songs, but it's so cool because you get to hear stories that you would normally hear if you see a band at a concert. Um, and some of them are just really up and coming, so many sponsors this just to represent that, you know, we're all into music and supporting local uh, papers like the Isthmus and their vision, and it's just a really fun thing to be involved with. Um, so if you get a chance, check out one of their videos. You'll see the mini right in the beginning. We drove around the block like three times to get the shot, maybe six times. Um, this is something that just went crazy this winter. I did this uh, little thing, I think because we had cabin fever and we were bored, and I'm like, what can I do? I'm not going out and doing anything, and it had just snowed a bunch, a bunch. And so I went around, and because I'm not from here, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, we don't get a lot of snow in Kentucky. I mean like five inches and the whole city shuts down. Although right now, this year, they've, they've really gotten it. Um, so I went around and I asked all the employees, what's your winter tip for people driving in these snowy conditions? Not just in your Mini Cooper, just in general. And then I took their picture. And some pictures were, you know, they, I told them do whatever you want to do. And some, some people were silly, some people were more serious, and it was really fun. And so I posted this winter tip of the day every day until I ran out of employees or coworkers. And um, it was great because, you know, they wanted to share that with their friends and their family, and it was great. Yes? Is Facebook your main medium? We, Facebook's what I love the most, um, but we definitely tweet and we Instagram. Um, 
I've tried to get Pinterest going, and I just, I'm not, I want to be better at that. And we definitely use YouTube. We do customer testimonials. Um, and Instagram, I'm starting to really like the video aspect of Instagram. It's really fun. We've um, done some really fun little things with that as well. But um, Facebook's probably my favorite, personally. Um, so this, you know, was just a really fun way to kind of go around and talk to the, my fellow coworkers, and I learned a lot <laughs> about driving around here in the snow, and we shared a lot of valuable information as well. So what does this all mean? Um, you know, it's really hard to really measure our return on investment with events. Um, my boss and I like to say that we're a living, breathing billboard when we go to events. Um, so we kind of treat that like we would with any outdoor campaign. It's really hard to tell if someone saw your billboard unless they come in and when they're buying their mini, when we're interviewing them, we try to ask them, you know, why'd you come in today? And if someone says, oh, we saw you in the Pride Parade or, oh, we saw you at Mad Roland Dolls, then we're like, yeah. But not everybody knows that marketing, we, we need that. Not everybody knows that. They just want to buy their mini. So, um, you know, sometimes that stuff's hard to measure. But um, Facebook had just brought some insights for us. Um, you know, our awareness, I do Facebook ads, and I've, I've been playing around with Boost a lot lately, and I've really been enjoying that. It's pretty cool. Um, so our reach has been great. Um, our likes have been up like crazy. And of course, this all ties into our website. We've been getting a lot of website clicks, a lot of website action. And that's what we really want. That's where people go and research the cars and um, hopefully come, get in contact with us, and we get email leads from that. Um, so I'm really done. I, I just wanted to share. I'm so glad that you guys let me um, share all this information and, you know, let me come in and talk about Mini and what we do locally. And I really appreciate Jake letting me be here and I'm going to hand it back over to, to Jake. So thank you so much. Thanks, Rebecca. You can really feel that passion of the, the Mini brand, right? You can, you can just sense it whenever... Rebecca talks about what they're doing with many. So with that, we just want to leave you with uh, some tips and tips and takeaways that you can take back to your organization and, and really, you know, create this culture of a contagious brand. With that, know your brand. What do you think of your brand? What do your colleagues think of your brand? Uh, what do your customers think of your brand? It may not be all the same. So get out and discover it, and then find out what makes your brand unique and really play it up. Uh, you don't need to be everywhere today, but you, you kind of do. Um, number two, know your story. Um, no matter your role, you have to know your story. Everybody has to be a storyteller today in, in marketing and sales and communications, whatever your role might be. You don't have to be a great storyteller, but you need to start and embrace it. Uh, beyond that, identify what content you have that can fuel your story and how you might invite your customers into that story. So don't be afraid to get out there and meet people. Meet your employees, as Rebecca has done, as well as your customers, your future customers, and your community. And really meet them. Be inquisitive. Uh, find out what they like and dislike about marketing. You might uh, find some new things about what motivates them or demotivates them. And step out of your element. Uh, you'll learn new things about yourself, your company, who you are, what you do, just by you know, stepping outside. Uh, and connect with people. Uh, to connect the dots. Tip number four, invite people into your world. Uh, let them get to know you because uh, it'll help you strengthen your story and how you share it. And share information. It feeds people and people feel something whenever they're sharing and learning. And next, uh, five, have some fun. Really, uh, have some fun. You should be doing the things you like to do because uh, your brand and people's connection to it is just so much more productive and enjoyable when, when you're having fun doing what you like to do and being yourself. So do it. And tip number six, uh, learn all that you can and share it. People, as Rebecca and I were just talking about this, people love to share to share. Uh, we learned that as kids, and uh, sharing brings out our passion. You can see that with Rebecca, and even the excitement that we get around Mini and what they're doing to engage their customers. So Mini knows that they don't just sell a product, they sell an image, and so they represent that anywhere and everywhere, and you can sense that. So with that, as promised, we leave you with five things before we part. 
Now, a brand is the sum of all experiences you have with an organization. In a time where everyone is inundated with messages and information, it's really important to uh, use a combination of tools and process and people to really connect with your audiences and build your brand. Uh, we need to do a little bit of everything today, but it's many of the things that we do that add up, try to do the most important things that you can measure. Uh, number two, we're in the experience era of marketing, and it's our role to create enjoyable experiences for our customers, so embrace it. It's a challenge and an opportunity, and it's a great time to be in marketing. Think about what can make that, that idea an experience. And with that, the most powerful approach to your brand is a combination of creative content creation and curation. Try new and different things and invite people into your story as you're able to better connect with your current and future customers. Four, unite and rally your community with online and offline experiences and give them a space to share their story. It'll really fuel your content marketing effort and the passion that people have and can feel with your brand. And then last, five, cultivate a contagious culture where all of your employees and your customers can feel part of something great and they want to share it. They just want to share to share because they value who you are and represent. So there you have it. Get out and do it. We've got a few minutes for questions, but thank you, everyone. Sure. With, with many or with uh, Wyden or any, any Wyden, ideas? I think about a lot more and mm -hmm. it seemed like you mm -hmm. provided a whole lot of incentives, mm -hmm. but maybe you do as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only incentives at events, sometimes we'll have a prize that they can win and that just encourages people to give us you know, their email mm -hmm. and phone number or whatever so we can um, send them an email and invite them out to future events. Mm -hmm. But um, we don't offer a major incentive. Everyone always asks us for giving away the car. Yeah. <laughs> we know for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with many, uh, they may have an easier time than, than most because people just, they love the brand and they want to share their experience yeah. with it. And so with like their monthly photo contests, it's an opportunity just to be featured on miniusa.com and all their social media to feel part of that community. Because as you can see from the many owners, they just want to, to share, to share. Uh, with the, the creative test drive, the final test, test drive contest, they had that unique privilege to test drive that, that new hardtop model before the rest of the general public had it. But for the most part, it's just they want to participate. It's, it's, it's that feeling of belonging. Uh, at Wyden, we do some contests with incentives, like you know everybody wants a gift card for Amazon you know, book or a CD or, or, or whatever it might be. So we'll do that just to increase product utilization in specific parts of our, our product. But it's, it's small compared to what we get out of it. And it's new and different ways that people are applying uh, what we provide. So it, it's a, it can range. Yeah. I have a question. How, how much an average, I'm always curious to know, how much an average do you spend a day on your Facebook posts and how frequently? Mm -hmm. I think it depends on if I'm doing an event or not. If I'm at an event, I probably spend a lot more time, mm -hmm. um, but maybe like a couple hours oh, so collectively. Money to boost it. Oh, money! Yeah. Oh, five bucks. Really? Five bucks That's your math for, for me. Months? I mean, it depends on what the, what I'm really trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, we have a a month long campaign that's going on right now and I created an event and I boosted that for like $20. Mm -hmm. right. um, but usually just like five bucks and it gets it out there to about, you know, a thousand to two thousand people and I feel like if it's more than that sometimes I don't know who those people are, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like the, you know, thousand to two thousand and five dollars and sometimes I'll stretch that out for two days but, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. do you do that like once a week or it, um, I'm really, it's random. I don't have a plan with that. It depends on what the content is. And I'm like, ooh, I really want everyone to see that. Or I'm like, you know, let's just see how this one does on its own, too. So I try not to do it every day. I'd say maybe, you know, three times a week. Yeah. That's a good poll opportunity. Who here manages their company's Facebook page? Many of us. Yeah. Uh, you've probably all seen that your content just doesn't get a lot of likes, views, comments, interaction without boosting these days. So has everybody played around with the boosting? Is it? Admin more so than the boosting. Okay, yeah. Admin. Your, 
target better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a quick, easy yes on your post to mm -hmm. do a boost, but if you go into ad manager, there's a few more details, bells and whistles to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I d definitely do both. And I think even with boost, you can define <coughs> your audience. You know, you, you can pick your audience. You can say it in an area and do 25 mile radius and age groups. So it, within boost, you can still do a little tweaking, but not much. Mm -hmm. We've tried it a little bit ourselves. Just a fun fact, yeah. I went to the Facebook um, like ad for Tracy's boot camp in Austin, and they actually make it now to where you only see 1% of your, the people that actually like your page. So only 1% of your audience is actually seeing it unless you boost or do an advertisement. So. Right. Any other questions about anything? So how many people in here are doing events at all with their companies, like live events or promotions or sponsorships? Do you find that those are helpful for your business? Do you feel like you're generating leads from that? I'm not sure what everyone does or if you're in sales, if you're trying to, yeah. That's good. As Rebecca and I were uh, getting this presentation together, just learning about all the things many of Madison is doing, you can see that they're really getting out there connecting with a lot of uh, niche audiences, which is pretty pretty neat. Uh, it's definitely a worthwhile thing to explore. And you know, lesson learned there is just explore you know, your niche uh, to, to find the people that can really get excited about your company. I think for us, what we do is we really try to figure out what events are interesting to us and then where people wouldn't expect to see a car. And then we put a car there. <laughs> and really just try to surprise people and um, you know, we'll have people come up to us a lot and say, you know, why are you guys here? Why is there a car here? And we're like, oh, well, we're sponsoring the event today, and they allowed us to bring our mini, and we want you to sit in the mini and check it out, and if you have any questions, you know, we're here. And there's usually a team of us with the car to answer questions, and sometimes it's motoring advisors, but most of the time it's just me and my staff, which is nice because we're not salespeople. So people don't feel that pressure. We're not pressuring, we're just there to basically myth bust. There's a lot of mini myths out there about it being too small for their, you know, golf clubs or their dog or whatever. We really try to, you know, let them open it up and sit in it and if their kids are there, get the kids in and um, it's really fun because it allows us to connect with people and they can hear our story and learn more about mini and that to me is just gold. If you've never been to the Mini and Madison dealership, I recommend it. I felt like going into Chuck E. Cheese 25 years ago because it is like an awesome experience just to walk into this location. And then once you sit down in a Mini, you, you can really feel the feelings that its customers have. So definitely recommend that if you ever want to just go out and see what's up on that uh, the hillside. On the hill, we're so. right up the hill from the Line Energy Center. Yeah, we used to be the Saturn dealership right next to Hyundai on the hill. Um, and that's another challenge, that's another reason I'm out all the time is because that location is um, the destination. You really, you would only go there if you're wanting to look at the car. So that's another reason that we plan these events and get the car out mingling with the people um, because it's a destination. All right. Thank you all for your time today.